Manning has time, firing toward the end zone. It's caught at the five. Engel breaks a tackle. Touchdown! Coming up on Gopher Football with Jerry Kill, all of the excitement from Minnesota's third straight Big Ten win. And then boom, he picks it up. Watch Coach Wilson here. Headsets go down. He, <laughs> there, there's no question that he knew. You've that, been that, that guy that, before, that, huh? We don't have to review that. Yeah, we've all been that guy. And Coach Kill previews the Penn State Nittany Lions. They don't take plays off. <laughs> it's like, a, I don't know, I was going to give Coach hard time. Do you find them or what? <laughs> they don't <laughs> hustle, but. It's your weekly look inside Golden Gopher football, and it starts right now. Welcome to the latest edition of Gopher Football with Jerry Kill. It's your weekly look inside the Golden Gopher Football Program, and I'm your host, Natalie Nias. It came down to the wire on the road this past weekend. The Hoosiers showed off their offensive prowess with 19 points in the fourth quarter, but it was still no match for the Golden Gophers. With three straight Big Ten wins, the Maroon and Gold have improved to 7-2. and two. To take us through the entertaining road win, Mike Max joins head coach Jerry Kill in the Hall of Fame room. Thanks very much, Natalie. The head coach, Jerry Kill, joins me. And coach, obviously, the first and foremost is the win and the Penn State. But take me back the last five weeks to, you know, what looked like you didn't know what was going to happen with this season to it becoming a storybook season. What has this been like the last five weeks for this program? Well, it, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's always everywhere our staff and I have been together, there's always some kind of shift in momentum. And uh, you just don't want know when it's coming. But, uh, you know, I think it all started uh, with adversity. And, uh, you know, through adversity, you either come apart or you become closer. And I think, you know, our staff, uh, uh, the players, you know, came together. And, uh, you know, our kids really stepped it up. Let's give the credit to the, the players. They're the ones that are playing. And, um, you know, I think the Northwestern win gave them a little bounce. And, and then certainly, you know, uh, you know, we, we kept telling me, we, you know, we believe in you. You got to believe in yourself. And, and uh, you know, we came out and played Nebraska. And then, you know, we're, you know, finding ways to win. You had to find a way to win in Indiana. So I, I just think it's, uh, you know, we always talk about team chemistry and things of that nature. I, and I talked to Mike Rollis, who played here a year ago. Sure. And, and he goes, co he's in my office and said, you know, coach, he goes, I could see it coming. I said, and he said, the, the players, he said, I could tell if, if, if bought in. And he said, sometimes you have to have success for players to buy in. They got to see what you're saying is true. And, uh, you know, I think, again, through the adversity and, and uh, getting, a, getting a win at Northwestern, I think, certainly was a, a big lift to those kids. Yeah, game changer. The other thing that you saw the other day, though, offensively, was David Cobb running the football. And this is what you've wanted from day one, is to have a running back, preferably. It doesn't matter if it's one or two, as long as you're picking up the yards. But somebody that can get into rhythm and pick up yards, carry after carry. And now we've seen this over the last few weeks, the way that he's emerged into not just a good football player, but what you want to be as an offense. Uh, no question. And, you know, he did a good job catching the ball, too. But I yeah. think the, the big thing with that, you know, you can't block them all all the time. You, you know, you can't be perfect. You know, you watch AP run the ball. Yep. And, you know, he runs through three of them or something like that. And I think that's what David's doing now is that he's, he's really seeing things good. He's got, you know, got good vision. And then when he doesn't have something, he's, he's going north and south and picking up yards. And, you know, his last two runs in the game when there's 14, 15 seconds to go, they had two timeouts. I mean, you know, he really stuck it in there. And uh, so uh, uh, we're certainly, you know, proud of him and, and uh, we've got to put him on ice and get him ready to go again. Yeah, for sure. And, and Philip Nelson, obviously, both quarterbacks played pretty well. Uh, Nelson's statistics a little more eye popping because of the four touchdown passes. No, no question. I think, again, uh, you know, Jimmy Sobrowski, our you know, offensive staff, has done a good job. We're starting to get better and better on offense. That all starts up front. But, you know, the two quarterbacks, uh, you know, uh, understand what we're doing, great communication. And, uh, you know, Phillips certainly had an outstanding game. But, again, Mitch had his role and uh, played physical uh, while he was in there and did some good things. So I think, again, our kids understand. And I think, I think they've learned from my position a little bit is that, hey, 
Um, you know, you, sometimes, you know, you, you can't worry about how much you're doing or, or, you know, you're getting cheated out of something. It's all about the team. And you just, you know, work together and let's go win. And it uh, doesn't matter. And uh, I think the quarterbacks have bought into that a little bit. You know, hey, let's just go win. Russ takes care of himself. Derek Engel's another kid. He caught a, touch, a couple of touchdown passes from him. But, uh, you know, he's gone from that, you know, I'm, I'm a transfer and I got to prove myself to now he expects. He expects to make big plays. No, no question. I think, that, I think Derek's a great story. You know, he uh, played a Division II school and, and had success there. And I think he wanted to see if he could do it at a higher level. And, and he's had his bumps and bruises throughout his career. And, uh, and now he's having success. And, you know, really that's what the game's all about. He stuck around long enough and stayed persistent and, and uh, you know, is, is making an impact on our football team. So I mean, we, we have a lot of those stories on our team, but uh, we talked about that on the way home. You know, uh, uh, certainly excited for Derek. Uh, he's a super kid, uh, family special. And uh, so it's good to see. The last drive, the drive for you, and ultimately the game-winning drive because, you know, what happened at the end of the game. Tell me about that in terms of how you assess it in terms of poise that that offense had taken the field as opposed to a year ago or six weeks ago. Well, when they, when they scored it, I mean, we were struggling. We were tired on defense. They just kept coming, and they get on a roll. That's how they are. And, uh, you know, and we got the ball with about five and a half minutes to go. And, uh, you know, I turned to Coach Limegrove. And I said, hey, you know, we don't have to get in a hurry here. You know, let's let's be patient because we don't want to score too much time. Yeah, and because we ended, you were actually trying. I, mean, I don't want to yeah. say trying to, but you, you, oh, you, yeah. want, you wanted to score with as little time left in the perfect way. Absolutely. And so we're just kind of chipping away, chipping away. And uh, but we had to have, you know, a big conversion. And and uh, uh, Coach Dabrowski, who does, you know, a tremendous amount with our passing game and that, you know, uh, you know, hey, you know, you're always saying, hey, make sure you got one here for us, Jimmy. And, uh, you know, and uh, we went to the play call and we had the tight open, you know, down the pipe and Max uh, ran in for a touchdown. And I've had several people say, we're hoping he'd fall in the five yard line so we you know, <laughs> would have put back on the field. But you take those scores, you know, those are games I think in the past that we, we hadn't have found a way to win. And uh, Aaron was smart by picking up the ball and, and, uh, you know, and then we ran out the clock. So sometimes, you know, you just got to find a way to win. And a lot of people go, you know, you know, we held them under their average. They've been averaging 42, and yeah. we got what they averaged. Yep. You know, so, yep. and, uh, you know, it doesn't matter how you win or how it takes place. It's just at the end what that scoreboard reads. So a uh, good, really, really important win for us. And now we say that again this week. We got to step up the plate, and, and uh, we're here at home. And, and I always said you got to win at home, and uh, so we got to got to do that this week. We'll take a look at Penn State and break down some of those key plays in the film room a bit later on the Jerry Kill Show, Natalie. When we return, Mike Max will join head coach Jerry Kill in the film room to break down the top plays from Saturday's win. And then boom, he picks it up. Watch Coach Wilson here. Headsets go down. He, <laughs> there, there's no question that he knew. You've that, been that, that guy that, before, uh, huh? We don't have to review that. Yeah, we've all been that guy.